Welcome to part two of how to master the technique of western blotting. I will show you in detail how to assemble a semi-dry western blot sandwich. Please don't forget to check out my personal blog where you can find a detailed written protocol of the following video content. Let's dive right in. First, I cut Wadman paper and nitrocellulose membranes by hand. It is cheaper to cut them on your own. Another advantage is the possibility to adjust the size and calculate the proper and purple area of your blot. Next, I write with a pen the name of the experiment and the date on the membrane. I take out the pre-chilled semi-dry transfer buffer and pour a little amount into three individual containers where I incubate the membrane, the Wadman papers and the SDS gel. But first I need to activate the nitrocellulose membrane in water. Be aware that a PVDF membrane must be activated in methanol. Next, I take the SDS gel and incubate it in transfer buffer. I use a pre-vetted spatula and I remove very carefully the gel from the glass. Now I transfer the membrane to the buffer and I incubate everything for 5 minutes in the buffer. Next I assemble the sandwich. First I put two Wattman papers over each other. Make sure that they stick to each other. You can roll over them with a plastic tube if you are not sure. I continue to place the membrane on the Wattman papers. It is essential that no air bubbles form between the membrane and the Wattman papers. Lift the membrane as often as possible until no air bubbles remain. Next, I place the gel on the sandwich. Again, make sure that no air bubbles form. You can wipe them off with a pre vetted spatula, but do it very gently, don't scratch the membrane. Finally, I add two more Wattman papers on top of the sandwich. Roll over with a plastic tube to tight up the blood. I add and connect the lid to the blotting chamber and add three weights on top to assure that the contact between the two electrodes won't break off during the run. I connect the cables to the power supply and adjust it to constant ampere. I calculated for my experiment 0.07 ampere per blood. I run the transfer for 90 minutes.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the second part of the video series. Please like and subscribe. If you want, you can watch the third part of the video where I show you how to apply the primary and secondary antibody and how to gather the data with an imager. See you in the next video.